What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for September 5th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. It is Tuesday. Time for a little motivation slash positivity. And I'm going to keep it simple today. It is back to school for my kids. A lot of you either going back today uh, or went back last week. If you work in education, then you've probably been back for at least a week now. Uh, But just want to wish everyone a very happy and successful new school year. As I told my students last week, happy new school year. And I think this is a good time to kind of reset and kind of get a fresh start for everybody almost like a new beginning. Uh, Yes, it's the middle of the fall, near the end of the year, but I think it's a good time. Football season's on the horizon, but I I know I, for one, I'm ready to get back into a routine with the kids being in school. Just even today, getting up at 4, 4.30 to work out, and it just was... It, it felt good, and it just is kind of one of those things to get back into a routine. So use this as an opportunity to continue to to work on something, start something new. Uh, it was basically almost a year ago that I started this podcast on a whim uh, right around the beginning of the new school year. So it's not too late to start something. And with that in mind, keep a growth mindset. Uh, that's something we talk about a lot in my school where it's, you know what, you might not be able to do it but it's yet. Uh, Doug Peterson famously said during that Eagle Super Bowl run, we're not done yet. That's the growth mindset you want. So take that away as we go into a new school year and just know that you're, you might not be where you want to be yet, but continue to work toward there. Uh, and like I said, it's a good time to kind of reevaluate, reset some goals uh, and get yourself back on track with the new school year. And if there are kids out there listening, Happy new school year, parents. I know I've talked to quite a few of you over the past few days and you are looking forward to it too. So happy new school year to you as well. All right. Phil's uh, tried to blow that game last night after being up eight to one and then nine to five uh, or nine to four started to to bullpen. uh, Bilotti and Soto in particular were a little shaky but uh they were able to hold on and it's hard to to kind of quantify it because it's one of those games where they had a big lead i'm sure they kind of got comfortable um and luckily they were able to kind of hold on alvarado and uh kimbrell there there at the end held them uh but they i guess the takeaway is they were able to move or increase their lead they're five and a half up in a playoff spot two and a half still on the cubs um, and I know I don't want to take away because they, they are increasing that lead, but I think it's time to maybe start looking at the pitching staff top to bottom and kind of figure out, is this uh, going to be an issue moving into the playoffs? Uh, it's been hidden over the month of August, really, because of how good the offense has been doing. Uh, but really, who do they – I mean, you have Wheeler, Nola's shaky, but how's the rest of that rotation going to – kind of sort itself out and work out so uh there's still time to to get it right uh no need to necessarily panic um but still kind of something to keep an eye on as we move forward if you want more phillies coverage check out our friends at 2008 phils it's the world's biggest email phillies newsletter Currently, we are they're offering 75% off a subscription to this day in Philly Sports History listeners. Check it out in the link. Uh, get you access to everything they have on the site. The 2008 World Series banner t-shirt. Uh, 2008 Phils will follow your Twitter account. And again, I keep saying it, but if you haven't done so already, give him a follow because there's some good stuff on his Twitter account. You get access to giveaways as tick as far as tickets, autographs, other memorabilia, uh, and special offers. So be sure to check them out. And it's two dollars a month, twenty dollars for the year. Highly worth it, especially as we're getting into the postseason run. While you're at it, check out my friends at the Clashing Conferences podcast. Uh, they should be getting gearing up. I, I believe last night, uh, due to fantasy drafts, they were going to preview and get their week one stuff out. So be on the lookout for that. I, I checked out. If you haven't done so, check out the pilot. It's it's going to be a fun podcast. It's just entertaining. Um, and to me, it's when you disagree with a cowboy or a Giants fan, you want to reach through the screen and smack them. 
that's to me the sign of a good podcast. So be sure to check them out. Week one should be coming out, uh, if not today, by tomorrow. So be sure to check that out. And on those same lines, I will be recording the Eagles preview edition of Back to the Future tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that as well. Speaking of the Eagles, it is game week. Uh, as we get closer, we'll start breaking down and, and looking at the, the Patriots game. Uh, they did make a move. No, we still don't have a punter on the official roster, uh, but they did bring back Nick Morrow uh, to the practice squad for linebacker depth. I really think and uh, pretty sure we're going to see him in a few games this year just uh, – in general, so I like the move bringing him back provides, like I said, a little bit of depth uh, at a spot where they're kind of weakened. But it's Tuesday, we still don't have a punter yet. Uh, no news on the Sixers front, which means the way this story has been going, something's on the something's going to happen this week. Uh, don't know what I could be wrong, but I feel like whenever we kind of have a lull with this whole James Harden thing, something happens so it's been a few days without a story um so i i just kind of his mo i I don't know if he's gonna do something so we shall see but no news right now on the james harden sixers front but today we're gonna go back to 1950 and on september 5th 1950 21 year old left-handed pitcher Kurt Simmons for the Phillies was officially drafted as a member of the 28th Infantry National Guard Unit in Pennsylvania. Uh, he was the became the first Major League Baseball player drafted for the Korean conflict, they were calling it then. It wasn't necessarily the Korean War. Uh, he would not be the last. A lot of guys uh, left to... Uh, because they were drafted. Some guys even voluntarily left uh, in the primes of their careers. But Simmons would pitch two more times before he was officially reported for active duty. Uh, in 1950, he was 17-8 and eight and could possibly have been part of the reason why they did not fare well in the World Series against the Yankees. Uh, he was one of their better pitchers, but he got drafted. And back then, it was a very patriotic and, and big thing to, to go serve in the military for your country. Uh, but on this day in 1950, Kurt Simmons was officially drafted into the 28th Infantry National Guard Unit in Pennsylvania to serve in the Korean conflict, as it was called at the time, costing him the rest of that season and being available to the Phillies in the postseason. And we know that that postseason was a lot of close games. So who knows if Simmons was there, if they would have fared any different. All right, it's September, and we've been doing who wore it best and going through the big numbers in Philly sports. Yesterday, we looked at number 55, and really no surprise, Brandon Graham dominated 90% of the vote, um, 92% to be exact. There was a few uh, Dikembe Mutombo lovers out there, but they were just no match for uh, BG, and I, I think you, you take into account the longevity he's been here, the fact that he did help bring them their only Super Bowl title to this point, um, and I think that played a role in that. Dikembe was only here a handful of years, and had they won in 01, maybe it would have been different, but Brandon Graham wore number 55 the best in Philly sports history. Uh, today, we are going to go to number 14. And interesting enough, it's one of those numbers that not many people have worn. Um, Currently, you have um, Sean Couturier, who may be retired. I could not find out for sure what he's going on. He was injured, but really what was going on with him. Uh, and Kenny Gainwell of the Phil, or uh, of the Eagles wore number wears number fourteen currently. However, some notables uh, for the Eagles: you had Riley Cooper. Um, he wore uh, infamous, infamously uh, racist rant at the country music concert. I forget even who it might have been. Kenny Chesney, uh, AJ Feely uh, came in and helped lead the Eagles in 02 when Donovan broke his leg. Uh, Del Ennis of the Phillies wore it. Danny Green for the Sixers. Brian Pop, Brian Prop, and Ron Sutter for the Flyers also wore it. 
But today it's coming down to two Phillies. And the first is Jim Bunning, who was one of the pitchers in uh, the 50s and 60s for the Phillies. His number, he's a Hall of Famer, is currently retired by the Phillies and hangs up on Ashburn Alley in Citizens Bank Park. Uh, he also threw the Father's Day perfect game. Uh, he also became a senator for Kentucky before he passed away. He is going up today against Pete Rose, who played a limited time, a few years, I think five years maybe in Philly. Uh, War number 14 was sort of the, the catalyst and, and the missing link, kind of like we've talked a lot about Moses Malone taking that, that 80s early 80s Sixers team over the hump. Pete Rose was the guy that really took this, the 80 Phillies over the hump and won them the World Series. Uh, kind of an underrated player uh, when he came into Philly, but uh, the guys seemed to love him. We all know about his gambling issues and lifetime ban, but now it's your turn. Who wore number 14 the best in Philly sports history? Pete Rose or Jim Bunning? Is there somebody else that I miss? But get your votes in. Pete Rose or Jim Bunning, number 14 for the Phillies. On this day, back in 1950, Kurt Simmons was drafted into the 28th Infantry National Guard Unit in Pennsylvania to serve in Korea. It is Eagles game week. I cannot wait. Uh, hopefully the Phils can bounce back and win another one. Hopefully not as uh, not as big as of a nail biter tonight in San Diego. Happy new school year for everybody who who's going back or just recently started. Again, time for good time good time for a new beginning and, and a new fresh start. So don't be afraid to try something new. Uh, if you're not where you want to be, have that growth mindset and say I'm not there yet. But this has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Tuesday. Happy first day of school to my kids. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.